Following my last video, we are now going to be doing some macro photography to have a look at the needle tips. So in order to do this, I'm using a Sony FE 85mm lens on my crop sensor Sony A6000 camera, and that's giving an effective full frame equivalent focal length of 128 millimeters. And I'm using that in conjunction with some macro rings in order to gain as much magnification as possible. Now the depth of field is exceptionally tight and so I'm using uh, f9 and as much uh, additional light as possible so I've got a flash going on as well as um, some additional lights as well to help give extra contrast as to the needle tip. But this is all incredibly narrow depth of field and uh, I'll have to zoom in as well in order to be able to appreciate just how small the recording surfaces involved are. It, it's really quite mind-blowing when you when you look through. So I hope you enjoy the coming segment. One of the interesting misconceptions people have about true single fibre EMG needles is that they are somehow blunt painful instruments and I don't think that this is true. Let's start off by comparing the brown needle over here, that's the true single fibre EMG needle to the standard limb EMG needle. So this one's the Ambu Neuroline one. And uh, if we have a look at the diameter of the shaft, it's 0.45 millimetres for both of them, exactly the same. The shape of the tip at the bevel is broadly uh, the same as well. Uh, no real difference in terms of its shape between the two. Uh, you'll note, of course, for the concentric one, the inner core over there, uh, whereas for the true single fibre EMG needle, you can just see this white material there, which is the insulating resin. We'll come to the actual shaft of this in a bit more detail a bit later on. Let's now contrast that to the 30 gauge facial needle from Ambu, and we can see, first of all, that the shaft is definitely narrower, so that's 0.3 millimeters for these 30 gauge needles, and also the tip, the actual bevel itself, although of a similar shape to the single fiber EMG needle, actually is approximately half the size. And so therefore, it's not surprising in our test from the other day that it was much easier to pass through the Ambu uh, needle as comparison to the true single fiber EMG one. Having said all of that, you know, if the patient is okay with having uh, the standard EMG needles pass through, then I don't see any reason why they would have any particular objection to having the true single fiber EMG placed. And one isn't really uh, digging around very deep with these. Usually it's done over the orbicularis oculi or the frontalis uh, for the most part. And uh, one's not really penetrating very deep. So I think from a patient tolerability side, if they're okay with the standard EMG needles, then they'll be okay with the um, true single fibre EMG needles too. Let's move on now and compare the needle tips between the three facial needles and the true single fibre EMG needles. So the one that second on the left here, that's a Technomed one. Um, let's just zoom in on that. So that's also 0.3 millimetres in diameter. The Ambu one we've already seen in some detail, also 0.3 millimetres diameter. And this is the Tekka one, also 0.3 millimetres in diameter. Let's focus in on the tips. I've already mentioned that the depth of field is actually incredibly tight. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, but the Technomed one is just slightly out over there. But uh, we'll have a look at the Tekka one in a bit more detail. That's more within the plane of focus. Um, you can see very clearly over here that its tip is actually different in shape to the Ambu one. So whereas the Ambu one is a bit more teardrop shaped, um, this has actually got more of a diamond shape at its tip before it becomes more oval. Interestingly, the Technomed one has actually got a very similar configuration to the Tekka one. And when it came to inserting these three different needles, the Ambu one was the easiest to insert, followed by the Tekka one and then the Techno mode. Um, now, I can't be absolutely precise about all of this. Um, clearly, they're all made out of stainless steel and stainless steel is made slightly differently and it will therefore have its own individual properties depending on its alloying. But from some of the websites, I could see that the Tekka needle apparently has some kind of coating on it to help its transition through the tissue. So. It could well be that the reason that the 
Tekka 1 had some slight advantage over the Technomed 1 in terms of the insertion uh, pressure required, which was just fractionately more for the Technomed 1, might be to do with coating. I'm not saying that for certain that the Technomed doesn't have one uh, in terms of coating, um, but certainly the Tekka 1 does say something about it on at least some of its websites. So that might also explain why there are differences in insertion between these three different needles, both in terms of the actual tip itself, its tip shape, but also in terms of what might be going on along the shaft of the needle in terms of any potential coatings that might be there. The other thing to say as well, um, and I haven't got any information about this, uh, is in terms of the vibrations that we were able to induce between the three needles uh, from the other day, um, which were all very, very different. Um, of course, different alloys will have different properties um, in terms of their tensile strength, etc. If I ever do manage to get more formal information about this, I will share that with you in a subsequent video. Um, but for now, we'll just have to note that there were quite distinct uh, variations in how these needles uh, were wobbling with vibration applied. So those are the three different facial needle tips and uh, those are in comparison to the true single fibre EMG needle. The other interesting thing I thought I'd just show you is if I was just taking away the white background and we get a bit more contrast here, this is the Tekka point that I was talking about. So here you can see very clearly now this is the diamond shaped tip of that and then it's more oval teardrop shape in its inferior um, segment. So uh, that's that needle tip in more detail. The final thing I thought I'd just share with you is what the business end of the true single fibre EMG needle looks like. Of course it does not occur at the bevel tip, rather it occurs several millimetres below that and you can see this small little orifice which has been cut out. I presume that these little markings on the shaft itself have something to do with the manufacturing process. And you can see here this is the resin over there, this insulating resin and this little uh, yellowish dot just over there is actually the recording tip of the true single fibre EMG needle. It's about 30 uh, micrometers in diameter, which is approximately the same or even smaller than some of the muscle fibres that it will be recording from. So this is a really remarkable feat of engineering and uh, hats off of course to Eric Starbuck for inventing this in the first place. It's really quite something to uh, consider and think about. If you found this useful, please do continue to view the rest of this evolving series as it comes forward and I hope you enjoy it and please do support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. Many thanks and looking forward to seeing you in the next video.